Hello YouTube, my name is Sean Bentley and I've been doing simulation work since around 2006. If you leave questions related to this video in the comments section, I try to answer them as quickly as possible. If you'd like to see more of this content in the future, please leave a like or subscribe to our channel. In this video, we're going to set up a thermal structural problem in Simulia Works. If you'd like to follow along, please follow the instructions in the description underneath this video. Our model will start off at 300 kelvins, it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll apply a heat source of 25 watts to the chip. We'll create a thermal interface between the chip and the heat sink with a conductance of 1430. Then, since there's a fan blowing on this, we'll apply a film coefficient of 250 on the right side of the model and then a lower film coefficient of 100 on the left side. In order to begin, we'll open up the regulator SOLIDWORKS assembly inside of the SimuliaWorks platform. Since we've imported an assembly, we have an extra item in the top of the tree, which we won't need. So let's delete it. And now all that remains are the five components that we plan on running our simulation on. Now we'll select the outer ring of the compass in order to launch a structural scenario creation. The structural scenario we'll create is going to be a thermal structural scenario. For our first study, I'd like to use the guided assistant. To save some space, we'll drag the title bar of the guided assistant and dock it to the left. This assistant will walk us through step by step setting up our first study. Starting with the setup, we'll create a finite element model with an automatic initialization method. Now we'll tell it what type of heat transfer problem we're setting up. In this case, it'll be steady state. And since I think this problem will be simple enough to run in one step, I'll just click OK to the defaults. In the next step, we'll define the materials that our parts are made of. We can use the material palette. In order to select one of the materials in the default database, or we can create our own. I've already created this copper material, which I'll apply to our heat sink model and also to all three connector models. If we look behind the assistant, you can see these materials have been applied to all three connectors and to the heat sink, but the microchip still needs a material. I've also created a ceramic porcelain material which I'll apply to the microchip. If you'd also like to create these same materials you can use the create material on the action bar and tell it to create a core material with the simulation domain in mind not just for appearances. You may want to tell it not to create any covering materials so set this to zero. And then for your new material, you'll want to edit its simulation properties. Properties that you'll add will include density, conductivity, specific heat, Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, and the thermal expansion coefficient. The values I used for this tutorial are shown in the description beneath this video. In our next step, we'll define how these parts interact with one another. In a thermal analysis, bodies either transfer heat perfectly to each other or have some thermal resistance to transferring heat. I'll create a couple of contact properties that describe the heat transfer effects. One property will be an ideal heat transfer that will just use defaults for high conductance. And I'll create another contact property which will go between the chip and the sink which will have a conductance of 1430 as long as the gap is smaller than 0.1 between components but any bigger and it'll have a conductance of zero. We can then create contacts individually or detect the contacts automatically Using this tool, it finds 16 surface pairs. By default, all of them have the ideal property assigned to them. However, I'll override this first one and tell it to use the chip sink contact. 
Now for our thermal conditions, we'll start by applying a volumetric heat source to this body of 25 watts. We'll set an initial temperature for the whole model to 300 kelvins and we'll apply some film conditions. For our first film condition, I'll select the left side of the model. Using this propagate tool, I'm able to pick on this face, set the propagate angle to something a little less than 90 degrees in propagate, and it selects this group of faces. I'll change back to the select tool so we can grab an extra face here. I'll use 100 for the film coefficient with an ambient air temperature of 300 kelvins. I'll create one more film condition and apply that to all the faces that are on this side of the model, which I'll pick individually. Once you've selected them all, you should have 14 faces, and onto these we'll apply 250 for the film coefficient with an ambient temperature again of 300. Finally, we'll mesh our model Using the Mesh Part Manager, we can mesh bodies individually or mesh them all at once using the Update buttons. Our meshes on these connectors are a bit wasteful, so I'll delete those meshes and I'm going to replace them with a Sweep 3D Mesh. Since I want to create three Sweep 3D Meshes, if I double click on this tool, it will keep the tool active each time I apply the mesh. I've already set a few settings here for the mesh size and the number of layers. If I click on this body and then select mesh, here you can see the effect of that. I'm okay with that mesh, so I'll click OK. And I'll repeat the process. Mesh, OK, mesh, OK. Now that we've created all our meshes, I'll hit cancel this tool. And now we're ready to simulate the thermal analysis. In the simulate dialog, you can see it wants to simulate also the structural analysis case at the same time. I can turn this off or instead, let's actually create our structural analysis case before I run either of these analyses. We'll cancel this dialog and we'll move on to the structural analysis case. In this case, we'll follow the same workflow, starting off by defining our setup with our finite element model. We've already created the finite element model, so we'll just select the existing one. We'll create our static step to run a static structural analysis. Our materials are already assigned, so we'll move on to interactions. I'd like all these bodies to be bonded or tied together, so we'll use the contact detection tool to tie surfaces together. Once we find surface pairs, we can click OK to apply all these contacts. We'll move on to our restraints, and I'd like to come up with a way to restrain the model without over-restraining it. A popular way that analysts constrain models like this are to fix a point. But now picture my model will be allowed to rotate about that point as though that point were a ball joint. So now also I'm going to fix a few additional displacements on a different point, and you can see a local coordinate system pops up on this point, x, y, z, and here I'll just restrain the y and the z translation, so this edge will still be allowed to freely expand in the x direction. Now if you picture how our model can move, it can pivot around those two points as though there's an imaginary axis connecting the two points. So we'll fix one more point, a point off of that axis, this one here, so that it can't move in that rotational direction, we'll fix it in the Z direction. And now this model will behave as though it's resting on a table, free to expand. There are many other reasonable ways that we might constrain this, such as constraining where the connectors would actually be hooked into another part. Finally, our loads. We'll start by applying the same initial temperature that we did before of 300 kelvins, but then we'll prescribe a final temperature from our thermal step that we set up earlier. And now both our thermal 
and our structural simulations are ready to run. I have six cores on my machine, so I'll go ahead and use all six of them. If I go above eight cores, you can see I begin to use some of my credits. Now you can see we're going to be running both cases. It's going to run the thermal analysis first, followed by the structural analysis. The actual solve is very quick, takes about a second, but acquiring the license and doing the preparation steps over the cloud uh, takes the longest time in this very simple simulation. In larger simulations it's usually negligible. If you blink you'll miss it. Solving. Completed. Now it should be moving on to the structural analysis case where it'll go through some of the same steps. Once that case is completed, we can close the solver window and view our results. Many of our results viewing tools are located over here. Start by looking at the structural analysis case. If I double click anywhere on the model, that allows me to adjust a few different settings about our current result plot. I'll bump the scale factor up to 100, and now we'll play an animation and set it to bounce. When you're done animating, select Exit. We'll customize the color chart. If you double click in the middle of the chart, maybe change this number to 2E8 and this one to 0. We can section the plot. Shortcut for that as well is simply by single clicking anywhere on the model and selecting plot sectioning. You can select the X arrow or use these planar directions to flip which plane we're using to section. We can also view our thermal analysis case with many of the same tools available here. Here you can see the noticeable temperature drop through our thermal resistance. It goes from about 407, drops quickly to 379 through that contact. Thank you for viewing this tutorial. If you'd like to see more content like this, please like the video or subscribe to our channel.